How important is the data on your personal laptop and your cell phone? Think about how much personal information is stored there. And then think about what would you do if you lost it today? What if your car got broke into? What if your home got broke into? What if they were damaged? What if you lost all of this information today? Where would you even start to recover it? Too often we put off something that I'm sure from time to time we say, hey, I really need to back that stuff up. I want to show you how easy it is to take both of these devices, create an image of them, and store them on one drive that we can safely and securely put away in case the worst happens. Hopefully we never lose this information or it gets into the wrong hands. But if we do, we'll be able to restore it from this drive. Let's get into it. Okay. No, All right, so for today's project, we're going to take an image of the laptop and an image of the phone, and we're gonna store them on a single drive that we can store away for a rainy day. The easiest part's gonna be the laptop. Now we could use the built-in Windows backup tools, but frankly, they're kind of primitive and they're not always that user-friendly. So we're gonna try some free backup software that I've been meaning to test out. It's by a company called AOME by Backupper. They have a full suite of paid data tools, but I've been meaning to check out the free version of their backup software. And I get it, nothing's really free. If it's free, you're the product. I've been doing this for a long time. I review a lot of software on this channel. And in a lot of cases, you're going to find these companies that have a lot of paid software in their portfolio. Chances are there's a free version with useful tools that we can find value in. And to be perfectly clear, I'm not against purchasing software. That's not my issue. My issue is monthly subscriptions. I don't want to lease software. I don't want to rent software. If I purchase it, it's mine. And too many companies today have moved to the subscription model. Well, this company actually has a couple of options. You can purchase a one year activation, which isn't a bad idea, especially if it's not something that I see myself using in a year from now, or you can buy the lifetime activation one and done, which is what I like. So that's why I've decided to review the free version of their software, because I respect the fact that they offer me the ability to purchase it outright, because they do have other software that I'm interested in checking out. Specifically, they have some data recovery tools that I will probably review. So why do they offer it to you for free? Well, the same reason you can walk into Walmart and buy a fully cooked, delicious rotisserie chicken by the front door for six bucks. It's to get you in there so you'll buy other stuff. Joke's on you, Walmart. I come there just for the chicken. They want you to use the free version of their software, and then eventually you'll see that it offers more options, and you'll think, hey, that would be useful. Let me upgrade to the pro version. But you don't have to do that. A lot of times the free tool is all you need and i think that's what we're going to find in this case too but we're going to find out together because i've never used this tool before so if it's no good and full of ads we'll find something different that's going to cover the software for the computer the cell phone is going to be a little different because this is going to vary based on whether you have an apple or an android what version of that android do you have I'm going to use the proprietary built-in software of the Android. It makes it very easy, especially with this external drive to just plug it in, run it back up, be done with it. For Apple users, it's a bit more complicated and you may very well have to use your iPhone in conjunction with a computer to create a backup through iTunes or whatever method you use. I know this company here actually has some software that's specific for iPhone users that does backups and all that stuff, but I'm not an iPhone user, so there's no value in me downloading that software and trying it out. I wouldn't be able to. So I'm gonna use the proprietary Android software to do the backup on the phone. And then of course, we need a storage drive. Now I'm gonna be using the Orico K20. It's a two terabyte SSD drive capable of data transfer speeds of 20 gigabits per second, which is huge. Actually, the K20 was designed with the iPhone in mind. You'll notice it has this magnetic ring around here. If you have an iPhone 12 or later, it uses what's called MagSafe technology. And there are magnets in the back of the iPhone 
for the wireless charging, those type of capabilities. And so it's actually designed to magnetically attach because the Orico is a magnetic hard drive. It attaches to the back of the phone and then it has this USB-C cable that plugs into the phone and the drive. So if you use your iPhone for things like shooting 4K video and you need two terabytes of additional storage, you can record 4K 120 frame rate video directly to this drive. Now, if you do not have an iPhone with MagSafe technology, they provide a magnetic ring that will stick right to the back of your Android phone. And I actually do plan on sticking this, but the first thing that I'm going to do is hit it with some of that matte black spray paint so that it matches the case and you can't actually see it. In the meantime, if you have an iPhone 15 or 16, you don't need any additional cables because they move to the USB-C standard. If you have an iPhone 14 or older, you will need a lightning to USB-C adapter in order to plug it in. What makes this drive special, which is why I agreed to use it for this project, is the two terabytes of capacity, but not just that, it's the transfer speed. It's the 20 gigabit per second data transfer that this thing is capable of. Now, my laptop is not capable of that because you have to have the latest generation of USB. And this particular laptop has USB 3.2 Gen 2 by one, which means it's capable of transfer speeds of 10 gigabits per second. And the one at the end means it has one data line. Whereas this particular hard drive is 3.2 Gen 2 by two, which means it has two data lines, each capable of 10 gigabits per second, totaling 20 gigabit transfers. So that's fast when it comes to external SSD drives. If you go searching through Amazon, taking a look at the speeds, most of them are going to be at that 10 gigabit transfer or 500. It's the uh, top of the line ones that can transfer at 20 gigabits per second. So you don't have to use this. You can use any type of external SSD that has the capacity to store your information, but I will caution you, you don't wanna go real cheap when it comes to storing things permanently, especially when it's important information that you can't afford to lose. You definitely don't wanna use an off-brand USB thumb drive and I probably wouldn't use this Walmart branded SSD drive. One thing you have to be careful for when shopping for SSD drives on Amazon or similar sites is there's a lot of fraud. And one of the first indicator is price. If you see a two terabyte SSD drive for 60 bucks, that's probably inaccurate. What they do is they manipulate the firmware in that SSD controller to make it appear larger than it is. And you can't actually tell that until you run out of space. So you certainly have to confirm and be mindful of what you're purchasing. This Orico, as soon as I took it out of the box, the first thing I did was looked up the SSD controller because they don't make the SSD controller. In this case, Silicon Motion does. I got the model number and I did my research on it. And it is in fact, everything that it says it is. That controller is capable of the 2000 megabits or 20 gigabits per second. I ran the read write tests on it to check the capacity of the drive and it is the two terabytes that it claims. I ran speed test on my laptop and got every bit of the 10 gigabits per second that my laptop is capable of, but I can't test beyond that in a real life environment because I don't have the right technology. But I'm planning on building a desktop soon and it will definitely have USB 3.2 2x2. And by the way, I'm not being paid by AOMEI Backupper or Orico. I'm not contractually obligated to say nice things. If the software is junk or the hardware is junk, we're gonna find out together and I'm gonna tell you. The verdict is still out on the software, but from all of the internal testing I did on this drive, I'm pretty impressed with it. So those are the tools we're gonna use today. Let's hop onto the laptop and let's get started. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug in my Orico drive to my USB-C port on the laptop. We'll set this phone to the side, we'll do that one next. So the first thing we're gonna do is create an image file and back it up to this drive. Let's go. So we're gonna hop over here onto Google and I'm gonna go to AOME. Uh, backupper, this is the website. 
I'm going to go to Downloads. I'm going to go to the AOMEI Backupper Standard. I'm going to click Download the Freeware. Okay, once it's completed, I'm going to click on it here in the download. My language is English. Of course, they want to sell me the Pro Edition. We're going to skip that. Except the agreement is checked for me. Then I'm going to click Install Now. Close that out. Before I click enjoy now, I'm going to uncheck this box here to join in the user experience improvement program. Now I can enjoy it. And I can handle an ad or two at the beginning and the end, but if ads pop up in the middle, that's when I say that's a no for me. So let's just see. Now I know from the research that I've done that we can do a basic backup, which is what we want to do today. We can also do basic sync where we could set up some files that we want automatically backed up at a certain time, that kind of thing. But today we want to do a disk image. So let's just go to backup. You can see some of this stuff here is behind a paywall, but what we want to do is right here, we're going to do a disk backup. Now, before I start this backup, I actually want to go into the external drive that we're creating the backup to. And I want to create me two folders, one for the laptop backup and one for my phone. You don't have to do that, but that's what I'm going to do. All right, now that I've done that, let's start disk backup. So it looks like we need to go to add a task. Disk C is the disk that I'm imaging. The one below that is the destination disk. So we're going to select disk C. I'm going to click add. Now it wants the destination drive. And since I created folders, I'm going to select a local path. And so for this one, I'm going to select the laptop backup folder that I created. So that's where the image file will be created and stored. Now I'm going to click start backup and let's see how long this takes. And we are back. I fast forwarded so you wouldn't have to wait, but it only took about five minutes, which is impressive if it worked. Let's click the finish button. Now we have our disk backup here, so it should be down in the folder that we created. There it is. So we know that it can back up. Let's see if it can restore. So I've got a few videos in this folder right here. We'll just delete the whole folder and if the restore works, it should be back. All right, we're ready for the restore process. So we're gonna go to restore. We're gonna go to select an image. We're going to navigate to that folder we created. I'm going to go to laptop backup. There's my image file. I'm going to select that. I'm going to select restore the entire disk. I'm going to click next. And the disk that we're restoring is selected. So I'm going to click next. It's warning me that the existing partitions will be destroyed, so make sure I back them up. But this is, in fact, the backup. I'm going to click OK. And I'm going to click Start Restore. And it's letting me know that it needs to restart to restore the image, so I'm going to tell it yes. I wasn't able to capture the restore process, so I will point the camera at it and let you take a look at it, but essentially it rebooted and then went right into this restore screen. It's about 72% of the way. It's actually pretty quick. It hasn't even been five minutes yet. Now it's restarting. We will switch back over. All right, we're back in Windows. That barely took five minutes, which is super impressive if you've ever restored your computer from an image file. And as we can see, that folder that I deleted is back and the videos are in it. So it actually did restore it from the image. Good job, AOMEI backupper. Okay, so now let's do our phone image. Okay, so now that we've finished creating the backup for our laptop, we are ready to start with the phone. So I'm going to disconnect the external drive from the laptop. And I'm just going to plug this in directly to my phone. All right. Now I will project the phone over to the computer so you can see it. Let's get started. Okay, I'm going to project my screen on the computer so that I can record it and show you. Now this is Android, but even your Android may be slightly different depending on version. You'll go to your settings. And then I'm going to go to Accounts and Backup. 
then I'm going to go to backup and restore. And then I'm going to skip all of these options related to Samsung and Google backup. And I'm going to go to external storage transfer. And now with my Oracle K20 drive plugged in directly to my phone, it's recognized that it is USB storage. So I'm going to click that. And now we're searching for data to back up. And I'm going to do everything. I'm going to tell it to back up everything. And there's 20 gigabytes of garbage on my phone. I'm going to go next. It's just telling me that it's going to be encrypted using my Samsung account. I'm just going to click OK. Now our backup has started. And it's going to be 25 minutes according to this. Looks like the phone is going to take much longer than the entire laptop did. I will meet you back here once it's completed. All right, and we are back and we are done. I'm going to click next and done. I'm going to take my Orico drive out of my phone, plug it into the laptop and check to make sure that my backup is there. Okay, let's see what all we got here. Looks like Android made a folder, so I'm going to take this one and the smart switch. This is a function of the Samsung app. I'm going to take both of these and move them to the phone backup folder. So now I have my laptop back up. I have my phone back up. I plugged the Araiko back into the phone. I'm not going to do the restore on the phone, but if I were to come down here to external storage, where it says or restore backup using smart switch, that was that second folder that you seen it created. It created an Android and a smart switch. Smart switch is just a Samsung app. Okay, so I had to make one change here. When I went to external storage transfer to check for the backup, it wasn't here. And it was because I had moved the two files that it created to that phone folder that I created. And apparently Samsung software is not smart enough to look anywhere else. So I had to move it back out of that folder for it to recognize here. So I am going to store it in that folder. I'll just have to remember that if I need to do a backup, I'll have to remove it out of that folder so that Samsung's smart switch software that doesn't sound very smart can see it. So now it wants me to select data to restore. I would just click everything and then click next. I'm not going to do that because I didn't remove anything and it took a lot longer to do the backup on this phone than it did the laptop. And that is going to be a couple of things. I attribute that to the AOMEI backup software. And of course the laptop architecture just being much faster than this older Galaxy phone. All right, now we have our laptop and our phone backed up to a secure drive. Now you can do something like place your secure drive into a protective bag like this and store it away in your safe or any secured location and you just want to remember the backups that are on here are up to date as of today you may want to come in here periodically and create a new image so that you're capturing more up-to-date information but the important thing is at least if something happens to the phone and the laptop you have somewhere to start you can also keep this plugged into your computer and set up intermittent backups that way you have a constant running backup and so there you have it. All of your data is securely backed up in one convenient drive. It's a shout out to Orico for providing the hardware for this video. Shout out to AOMEI Backupper. Not bad. Would I recommend it? Yes, I think there's value in using the free tools. The backup process was easy and super fast on the laptop using AOMEI Backupper. So I definitely recommend using it for that. Drop some comments below. If you think this would be an easy solution that you'll try, I hope you do secure that data. I'll leave links in the description for AOMEI Backupper's website. I'll also leave a link in the description with a discount code if you want to pick up the Orico 2TB SSD drive. Be on the lookout for my future video of how my office chair ruined my hardwood floors and the technology behind this Ewin chair that will prevent that from happening in the future. Don't forget to like and share the video and subscribe to the channel. It helps me grow the channel so that I can continue to bring you content just like this. As always, thank you for watching and until next time.